Welcome to the TechnologyCloset.com and our quick shots. In this quick shot, it is part two of the task manager. As you saw in a previous quick shot video, we have a lot of information that we can show you on the task manager. Let's go to the performance tab. The performance tab shows us a, a few things here. One, it shows us the amount, the amount of work our central processing unit or our computer chip is really using at the time we're looking at whatever's happening on our computer. Secondly, we can go to memory. Let's go back to CPU so you can see that. I'm sorry. As you can see, it gives you information, technical information about the CPU. And it also gives you a graph. And it shows you some percentages, processes, threads, handles. Again, this is technical information that a computer troubleshooter may require. For the average user, it's just for information purposes. Let's go to memory. Memory shows how much memory we have available, how much is in use, and how much is committed for other things. There's a pool of memory. There's uh, memory composition. It shows us memory used by drivers and the operating system. There's also a little slice right here, which is the memory that contains cache data. You notice it's very small, and that's what we like to see. Next is disk. This is our hard disk. And it would show graphically our disk utilization. As you can see, we have very little, if any, in this case, no disk utilization. We're not processing anything to send back and forth from our hard drive. Finally, there's this thing called Ethernet. The Ethernet is the cable or the wireless network that you have running on your computer. When data is transferred back and forth between your computer and another computer on your network, or another computer on the internet, you will see activity here, and it can be measured. You can graphically display it as well. This is kind of helpful if you're having uh, difficulty getting to a certain internet site, and you're not sure whether it's on your computer side, or whether it's on the network connection, or is it the uh, website that you're trying to connect to. Let's check the next tab, App History. Now, App History shows us the current applications that are installed on our computer. And if we click at the top under the name, we can change the alphabetical order, as you can see. It will also show us individually, though, how much computer time is taken up, how much network data is being shoveled back and forth. Are we on a metered network? If we are, this would tell us how much we've used so far and, of course, any updates. Let's go to the Startup tab. Startup just simply lists any software that starts up initially when you turn on Windows 8. This could be, in my particular case, a core service that is necessary for me to display this particular screen. But there could be others as well, such as a backup utility that may be running and scheduled and comes on as soon as you turn on Windows. Let's look at the Users tab. Currently, I'm the only user. There could be others on my computer, but they're not actively using anything at this point in time. If we click on the Chevron to the left of the icon, it will give us the utilization of a lot of the things that are running for this particular user. Show us the amount of CPU, memory, disk and network utilization. Again, this is some valuable information for the troubleshooter. We have a details tab. This is really scary. The details tab shows all of the running processes that are taking place. There's a lot of them, as you can see, and the more software you enter and put onto your system, the more updates that you do, there is a likelihood that you're going to have more processes running. This is only, again, useful information for the technical support person who may require that you go in and look at this particular tab. And finally, there are the Services tab. Services is another scary looking one. 
Services are, again, software or software modules uh, that are loaded at the time Windows is uh, started. And they all have functions that they are required to do, or they have linked functions. That means one function has to be, one service has to be running before another service can run. It tells us some of the information about the service. For example, if we look at the service called BitLocker Drive Encryption, we see that it's stopped. That's good. We're not using encryption on our system. We don't want it running if we don't need it. It uses up memory. Well, that concludes this quick shot on the Task Manager. Please visit our website at thetechnologycloset.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next time.